Netflix and the Smart Client. It's the podcast industry report number 112. Show notes, links, conversation, and more at thepodcastreport.com forward slash 112. Netflix just realized what we've known for over a decade now. People like to download their content and take it with them. Hey, this is Paul Colligan. This is the Podcast Industry Report, the show where I show you, the podcaster, how to reach more with your message, how to profit more from your content by taking a look at the industry that I've been involved with for over a decade and that you are getting involved with deeply and intently looking to do these things. Let's do them together. Let's have a great time doing it. This episode will be a little shorter than some, but we've got some great content and I want to make sure you've got what you need to do well here. I'm heading on a trip tomorrow. I don't feel like working on the plane tomorrow. I want to watch something. Typically, this is um, grabbing something from somewhere, maybe running something from iTunes. But you know what? Netflix just introduced downloads. And it's funny, Netflix just introduced downloads. I started with Netflix with the ultimate download, the DVD. And then they went to streaming. And then streaming got more and more focused. And then I dropped the whole DVD thing. And then they never let me download, and I've played with tools and devices and services and different things that let me grab it, and all of a sudden now, it's available for download. I opened up my iPhone, and I grabbed a couple of movies I've been interested in seeing, a couple of shows I've been interested in seeing, click, click, done, and now I can watch these on the plane tomorrow if I decide not to work. Uh, Netflix just turned this on, and it's funny because, yes, the whole industry is is jokingly, begrudgingly saying, you know, wow, exciting can't believe they just thought of this. But the fact of the matter is the industry um, has thought about it. The industry has pondered it. And the problem is, is downloads represent a little bit more work. Downloads represent a little bit more effort. Downloads represent um, a lot less control. And these are all things that we as podcasters have been dealing with for a long time. And we have realized, we've realized it's better. Yes, there are a lot of things we don't get from podcasts, but letting people consume our stuff anytime, any place, anywhere, any device is what makes podcasting so powerful. Your first podcasting goal should be, and if it isn't, I want you to ask why it isn't, just be good to your audience. Let your audience grab you when and where and how they want. Grab your show when and where and how they want. That's the power of this industry. I now, iTunes, I'm sorry, Netflix, changed just a couple of things, just a couple of rules. Yeah, they had some coders come in and fix this up. But now the service is two, three times more valuable to me. And there's a bit of a smile on my face because I can do this. And the company, again, becomes one of those companies that I know I'm not going to cancel at the end of the year as I clean up my books and that type of thing. This is where podcasting is powerful. This is what you want to do. This is the type of impact you want to make on your client. You want your client, you want your customer, you want your audience, you want your tribe to go, yeah, this one's easy. I don't have to jump through hoops for this one. You do that, you will win. You'll be in a great place. So that's part one of the conversation. Part two of the conversation, the smart client. And I'm not speaking about the smart client in a software standpoint. I'm speaking to a smart client. I took on a new client here at the firm. And smart guy doing well, making good chunk of change, really impacting the industry, doing well, has a great show that their person had been putting onto YouTube and then had been converting to an audio podcast. And he went to his Apple TV and he searched video podcast and he searched for a show and he couldn't find his show. Now, the fact of the matter is he couldn't find his show because nobody ever put it up as a video podcast. That's one of the things we're getting fixed for him. And it's not going to be that complicated. It's not going to be that hard. The work's already being done. The funny thing, it's on YouTube. But the smart client didn't, didn't realize that YouTube and video podcasting is different. And this, again, is a smart guy. And this is the problem. Our audience, our clients, our industry they don't know a lot of things about what it is that we're doing. They don't know the intricacies of RSS feeds, and they don't know the intricacies of this versus this and that versus that. Actually, I had another guy today, a guy I hope to be working with very soon, um, again, contact me, and he had some questions about video podcasts, and this is a guy doing incredibly well. Millions of Facebook fans. It really didn't understand the intricacies of the video podcast. Well, here's the thing. When you have millions of Facebook fans, you don't need to know the intricacies of video podcasts. When you've already got the thing in space and the four cameras shoot and the back 
industry and you know the, the 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 back office and the products and the services you don't need to know about video podcasting you just want to go to somebody that makes it happen that's it from the client standpoint but from your audience standpoint your audience doesn't want to know or doesn't need to know your audience just needs to do they need to go to netflix they need to click download they need to go to your podcast they need to click download they need to be able to reach their people with as little friction as is possible as easily as is possible on all the platforms I preached this in the in, in the past. Some of you uppity podcaster types who believe that if if a certain uh, platform degrades your audio or something like that, that suddenly it's it's war. Not someone's actually getting your content into the ears and the eyes of your audience. But take a deep breath, okay? How can you make it easy? But Paul, the video world, you know, YouTube, YouTube already has YouTube Red. YouTube Red, Red, you know, I just signed up for YouTube Red and I've got, I think, three or four free months of it and I'm definitely going to cancel it when it's done. It's nice, it's easy, but it's but it's still nerd-wise. And the fact of the matter is, is Hollywood would never put a movie only on iTunes and forget Amazon and forget Vudu and forget Comcast On Demand and forget all these guys. They're going to take their movie. They're going to put it everywhere. They're going to take their content. They're going to put it everywhere. This is exactly what you want to do. So think about video. People love video. I've chatted about that for a while. Definitely have a YouTube strategy. You know I've got my book. You know I love YouTube. But then also have a video podcast strategy. Oh, Paul, it's one more step. Yes, your audience, your customer is worth it. Oh, Paul, it's going to be a few more bucks at Libsyn. Yes, your audience, your customer is worth it. You see, you're in charge of this. You are in charge of making sure that it is easy for your customer, your client, your tribe, your audience to consume your content. You're in charge, nobody else. It's not Apple's job to make it easy. It's not YouTube's job to make it easy. It's not RSS job. It's not Adam Curry's job. It's your job to make it easy. You're in charge. I want you to act like it. What's your take home for this? Your take home is simple. Are you being good to your clients? If you're saying no to your clients in some way, you're going to die soon and quickly. Be good to your clients, give them what they want, and they will return the favor to you. Okay, this is episode 112. Last episode 111. If you haven't listened to episode 111 yet, I issued a challenge. Uh, basically seven ways to respond to your podcast and what it is that you're doing. And the challenge went a little bit deeper. I said, if you respond, if you give me seven sentences at the website, I will pick one of you for a random consulting session that will then put in a future episode so you'll both make your show better as well as get some good promotion of your show. Uh, that is still open. I will close that up next week. Um, next week will be the prediction show when we'll chat about what's happening in 2017. And then the week after that will be the recording of the consulting session. And then we'll go on a little winter hiatus and give everybody a break from podcasting. Let you spend time with your families during this most wonderful time of the year. I would love to interact with you. The podcast report.com forward slash 112. Love your thoughts on Netflix and downloads and video podcasts and being good to your client and taking things with you. Go ahead and make a comment there. If you want to do the social thing, you can head out to thepodcastreport.com slash Facebook, thepodcastreport.com slash Twitter. But here's the big thing. And being kind to you, I mean, if you're at the website clicking play, thanks. But know this, it's a lot easier than that. If you subscribe to the show, if you set it up so that you follow the show, every time a new episode releases, you're going to get it. You're going to get it where you want. You're going to get it at thepodcastreport.com slash iTunes. 80% will do that. But you're also going to be able to get it at thepodcastreport.com slash Stitcher or thepodcastreport.com slash TuneIn or thepodcastreport.com slash Google. Wherever you want to get this stuff, I want to get this to you. I want to make sure you're able to get it because gosh darn it, it's worth doing. I know you want to reach more with your message. I know you want to profit more from your content and I'd like to help you do it. So if you haven't listened to episode 111 yet, please do so. Submit your seven sentences. If you have listened to episode 111 and you, you have not yet submitted your seven sentences, do so. At this point, we've only got a few who have submitted. Um, if you're one of the two, um, thank you. Um, right now, your chances are pretty good. Next week, the big prediction show. The week after that, the review. And then a little break. Thanks so much for listening to the show. I appreciate you. We'll chat soon. Bye.